Jigsaw, dude. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I don't know like what you guys can see on my desk, but I've been getting this amazing taco like salad dip. It's from Target and it is amazing. That and I've been on like a real lemonade kick lately. I don't know what my deal is if I just need like more acidic stuff in my stomach. I don't know, but that's not important. Anyways, let's just jump right into today's case. So on Thursday, July 13th, Carly Russell left work in Birmingham, Alabama around 8.20 p.m. And then she made one stop to pick up some Mediterranean food, which... Ugh, I've never tried, but I so want to. Um, she was working part-time during the day at the Woodhouse Spa because she was still a student. She was in college. I don't want to say which school she goes to because, you know, privacy reasons. So then she found a crying like toddler boy walking along I-459 South by mile marker 11, according to police. So she pulled over her red Mercedes onto the shoulder of the road and put on her hazards. Well, she called 911 and like, of course, reported the child who was young enough to still be in a diaper. And then she got off the phone with 911. I don't know why they didn't think to like keep her on the line until, you know, officers showed up to the scene. But then she called her brother's girlfriend who heard Carly ask the kid if they were okay, which of course she, you know, couldn't hear the answer. But then she heard Carly scream and then like, that was it. She could just hear sounds from the interstate, like cars driving by, you know, stuff like like that so around 9 20 like it's starting to get pretty dark in the south um i mean like even during the summer it gets darker a little bit quicker down there so visibility wouldn't have been real great so if there were any witnesses which there was one witness that claims that they you know saw something but it's like your um visu visibility is like pretty pretty low at that point so when authorities arrived on the scene, which was only three minutes later, there were zero signs of the child or Carly. Now, I don't know if anyone else has heard this, but I've heard that kidnappers used to use kids as a ploy to kidnap women. So they would like play a recording of a crying baby on their um, porch. And then when someone opens the door to see if a kid was left on their porch, they would like snatch, if it was a woman, they would snatch her up and like take her. I don't know if that's like true, if that ever genuinely did happen, but I just heard that, oh yeah, it, you know, it happened. I don't really know, but I'm just saying. So that alone would have me kind of weary of a kid, especially on the interstate. But at the same time, I definitely would have stopped and I would have called 911, but I don't think I would have gotten out of my car. I'm not saying that Carly did anything wrong. Genuinely, I don't think that she did, but should you ever find yourself in a situation like this, don't get out of your car and make sure to stay on the phone with 911 and then maybe even just to be safe, like while you're on your phone, like share your location with somebody, even if it's just for like that, you know, short amount of time, just to be safe. But back to our story. So when cops arrived onto the scene, they found Carly's car running, but left in her car were her wig, phone, and purse with her Apple Watch and AirPods still inside. And remember, she drove a red Mercedes, so lots of things that would be very, very appealing to someone that's gonna rob you. So I don't really, like, I genuinely don't think this was a robbery, because why would you leave a watch or, especially AirPods? Like, a watch, I understand, it'll track your location, but AirPods? I don't know. So Carly's disappearance started a statewide search that was called off after two days when Carly walked up to the family's home, knocked on the door and was like, hey, I'm back. Just kidding. She didn't say that, but she just walked up to the house and knocked on the door and she was home. So after the family called police, they were like, yo, we need to get her into the hospital. So they took her into the hospital. I don't know what her injuries were. I couldn't find anything on that. Um, but then after that, Carly's boyfriend posted a statement on Instagram saying that she had been fighting for her life for 48 hours and she had mentioned a kidnapper. Police haven't confirmed or denied whether or not a kidnapper really, you know, did have something to do in this case. There were some security camera footage of Carly getting out of her driver's side door and then walking around the back of her car or on her passenger side. 
to get to the child. The footage isn't real great, but authorities say that they're gonna keep looking for more footage that could lead to an arrest, hopefully. They also reported that there had been no reports of a lost toddler boy missing that night. So like Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there had never been a report of a missing kid like in that area. Um, $63,000 had been raised by the nonprofit Crime Stoppers of Central Alabama for anyone that had clues about Carly's disappearance, but since she returned, the money was sent back to donors. So they genuinely do use the money to help in a case. They don't just keep it for themselves, which I think Crime Stoppers is amazing. On Monday, Officer Keith, oh, I know I'm going to butcher this, check, <laughs> chess, Chekloba said that authorities had spoken to Carly once and are following up on that information. However, we are not able to publicly share the details from our initial interview, which makes sense because you could have people coming forward and saying, oh, I know this, this, and this about the case, but it's like, okay, well, those were all things that were reported on. So like everyone knows that if you read, you know, about it. So I know that's why they'll keep some cards close to the vest. So that way, if someone comes in with legit information, they can be like, yeah, that wasn't released to the public. So this info is like legit. He goes on to say that we will follow up with her again to attempt to get a better understanding of the past 72 hours and we'll provide what information we can when we're able to do so. Carly's dad, Carlos Russell, said that she now suffers from bad dreams and moments where some things make her cringe, afraid, like loud noises. Rightfully so. I would be scared too. Just different things that trigger her. So I genuinely hope that Carly gets some therapy or some counseling, something that can help her cope with what happened. And hopefully she is able to recall as much information as she possibly can in order to arrest the people that did this to her. My heart goes out to her and her family. It's amazing that she's home, but they have such a long road ahead of them of like recovering from something like this. So that is all the information we have as of now. Like I said, this just happened, so not a ton has been released yet, but I will try to keep you guys updated on what happens later on in this case. If we get more answers at any point, I will let you know. But that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video to be interesting, please be sure to give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Five days a week, I post about controversial people, true crime stuff, and then on Saturday, typically I post like a vlog or just kind of a bonus video from my life. Sundays I don't post. I'm trying to cut down just a tiny bit to save my sanity. <laughs> but six days a week I have videos for you guys. And tomorrow will be another true crime video. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe out there. Don't get in a car with strangers. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't eat yellow snow. All that good stuff that your mother tells you. I am now telling you as well. Alright. Have a good day. Be safe. Bye guys.